Video games can be a very strange source of stress relief. Sitting down to relax with a game is sometimes a source of mental anguish itself. But despite that, they're still helpful in alleviating the daily stress of adult life. Over the past month, this has been Celeste for me. A brutal, frustrating platformer that I completely adore. You play as Madeline, who has set out to climb to the peak of Mount Celeste, and along her journey, encounters her own anxieties and self-doubt, literally in the form of a dark doppelganger. You experience Madeline's struggle in climbing the mountain through the challenging platforming, but the theme of anxiety is also explored in perhaps a less obvious way, the music. Composer Lena Rain has put so much of herself and her own personal struggle with anxiety into the soundtrack in order to tell Celeste's story through its music. We know that music can have a physiological effect on our body's stress levels, even while playing games. A study from 2004 got people to play a round of Quake 3 Arena and then measured their levels of cortisol, a hormone released in response to stress. Half of the participants played with the game's heavy, big beat techno soundtrack, and the other half played without the music. While both groups performed similarly in-game, cortisol levels were significantly higher in those who played with the music, suggesting that they experienced a higher level of stress. While one study proves nothing on its own, these results are in line with many other studies that have observed a link between music and stress, though most focus is on lowering stress through relaxing music. High intensity games commonly abuse this link by having pounding, electrifying scores that crank up the player's stress, while low intensity games typically have soothing soundtracks that help you zone out and relax. As a game about anxiety, Celeste needs to tread the fine line of being stressful, but also enjoyable and not inducing so much stress that it's overwhelming. The soundtrack helps to strike this balance by actually being quite peaceful. Take the track Resurrections, which is a combination of cues from the second level, the old site. <laughs> It starts at a strolling pace of 72 beats per minute, features a pretty arpeggiating synth line, and dreamy ambient synth pads quietly in the back. There's also a lovely piano part, an instrument which is used throughout the game to represent Madeline. While the game isn't terribly difficult at this early point, you are still learning and thus dying a lot. But the calmness of the music takes the sting off a little, lowering your stress levels instead of increasing it. This is when Madeline first encounters the dark part of her, and from here on in the level's gimmick activates, these glowing space boxes that allow you to dash swim through them. The soundtrack reacts at this point, adding extra synth layers to the mix, as well as a gentle, steady drum beat. This beat is important, as your mind latches onto the rhythm and it kind of lulls you into a meditative state, allowing you to hone your concentration as the game's complexity increases. It's a similar effect to those lo-fi hip-hop study mixes you find on YouTube, which combine unobtrusive ambience with chill, repetitive hip-hop beats that pull you into a trance-like focus helping you to achieve that magical, zen-like state of being known as flow. Flow can exist when you are hyper-focused on a difficult task. It requires a certain level of skill to be pushed to its limits and challenged. It shows that the mind can react to stress in both positive and negative ways. Positive stress is called eustress and is invigorating and productive. It's what motivates us to learn an instrument, or compete in a competition, or climb a mountain. Video games are great at tapping into eustress by providing small challenges with easily defined goals to achieve. 
This is what allows difficult, stressful games to ultimately be a fun and rewarding experience. Celeste encourages you stress by finding balance in its difficulty, limiting many of its challenges to a single screen so an end goal is commonly in sight. Dying quickly respawns you at the entrance of the scene, minimizing the frustrations of failure. And the game's simple controls also help, with only three moves available to Madeline. A jump, a dash, and a wall climb. With complexity being added through a drip feed of environmental gimmicks. This means there's almost never any confusion as to how to complete a stage. It's just a matter of successfully pulling off the maneuver. And of course, the peaceful soundtrack tempers the game's frustrating difficulty as well. All of this prevents Celeste from causing too much negative stress or distress. This is when a challenge is too overwhelming and leads to anxiety and inaction. Games are also able to cause distress, intentionally or not, by being too difficult or overloading the player. In Celeste, the boss chase sequences can lean on the side of distress. Sections are often much longer than a single screen, and they force you to rapidly bound through the level while avoiding projectiles and hazards. And the music is excitable and chaotic, which all combines for a more tense and distressing experience. And let's not even get into the grueling B-side and C-side bonus levels. I am not ready to relive that trauma yet. Pretty much every character in the game experiences some kind of anxiety in their life. Fellow mountaineer Theo is overly concerned with his social media and how other people view him. Resort owner Mr. Oshiro is unable to cope with the stress of running his failing business. And Madeline commonly experiences panic attacks, something that composer Lena Rain was able to relate to and embody in the soundtrack. For me, like I also, you know, suffer from anxiety and, and depression. So I, I identify with Madeline a lot in just kind of the struggles that she's dealing with. And so musically, when I was scoring that part, like I really wanted to just hone in on the the key parts that would make it feel like an anxiety attack and, and make make the, the player uncomfortable. The scene that Lena is talking about here is the gondola ride. When it stalls out halfway across the chasm, Madeline begins to worry, and you can hear a hesitant variation of her theme on the piano. This quickly evolves into a panic attack, and her musical theme is completely engulfed by these massive synths that sound like a blaring alarm, which keep getting louder and louder until the piano is completely drowned out. Theo teaches Madeline a coping technique involving a feather, and there's even a little mini game that makes you do it too. Slowly the synths fade back out until once again you can just hear the piano playing Madeline's theme. She has refound herself and come out the other side. As someone who has experienced bouts of anxiety myself, this was an affecting moment for me. I didn't even realize I was feeling suffocated until I felt my breathing begin to sync up with the gentle cadence of the floating feather and the space returned to the music. Oftentimes, it's hard to recognize when anxiety begins to set in. It's more of a gradual buildup that slowly overwhelms you rather than reaching a specific breaking point. I'm appreciative that Lena was able to be so open and imbue this moment with her own personal understanding of anxiety so that it may help others understand and recognize the feeling. But it's not limited to this one story scene and a moment of anxiety. Just as levels are uniquely built to offer different challenges, so too is their music built to create different kinds of stress. Let's take a look at the third level, the Celestial Resort, with its spirited caretaker, Mr. Oshiro. The hotel doesn't see a lot of guests, and it's in a bit of a messy state, not helped by the mountain manifesting Mr. Oshiro's anxiety in the form of these little plague dust bunnies. Madeline chooses to help clean up the place a little, 
but this only serves to humiliate Mr. Oshiro and further exacerbate his anxiety. Lena said that she wanted to use dynamic music stems in this section to reflect Mr. Oshiro's mental state as you're cleaning, building up the track and making it more and more unstable. You have three wings to clean in any order you choose, and the music changes its instrumentation on the completion of each. So clearing the first wing adds a spooky theremin. The second replaces it with a heavy synth. And the final wing brings back the theremin to complete the track. However, despite the increasingly frantic music reflecting Mr. Oshiro's increasingly frantic mental state, it never dips into distress because you are in control of Madeline, and Madeline is in control of the situation. There is a great sense of you stress in this level because there are clear paths to take, objectives to complete, and your progress is rewarded by the bouncy music piecing itself together. This is not the case after the gondola ride in the Mirror Temple. It starts off as a creepy ancient temple with huge dark areas you need to light up and branching paths to get lost in. The music, titled Quiet and Falling, is serene and mysterious, with an ominous piano and a very hollow sounding synth. Unlike the Celestial Resort's clear goals, there's a lot of aimless wandering here, and whenever you unlock a door, nothing in the music changes to acknowledge your progress. Then Madeline enters the mirror, and things get a little weird. The mountain's power is strong here, manifesting Lovecraftian monsters that hunt Madeline down, and imprisoning Theo in crystal while eyes surround and watch him. It's alien and distressing. They are not at all in control of the situation. The music fills every available space with layers of eerie, dissonant synths that don't really go anywhere. And underneath it all, you can hear these unsettling reversed vocals, which is Lena herself acting out Madeline's anxious thoughts in this backwards mirror dimension. The music is a mirror image of the level, reflecting its own aimlessness and alien darkness to create a palpable sense of anxiety. In the end, Madeline doesn't quash her anxiety. She grows to understand it and develops methods in order to cope with it. She learns to respond to the stress in her life in a healthier way. I myself am trying to learn better ways of handling my own anxiety, and one of those ways is definitely listening to music. Celeste's soundtrack has been important to me in this way over the past month, and I think it will continue to be for many years to come. In the next video, I want to talk a little more personally about this, and explain the impact of my favourite video game track of all time, Fisherman's Horizon from Final Fantasy VIII. This is in celebration of GameScore Fanfare's first birthday earlier this month, and for reaching a new goal on Patreon, where over 100 people now support the channel. I'm so amazed and grateful for the generosity of so many people. Thank you to everyone who has supported the channel over the past year, financially or otherwise. It all means the world to me. Thank you so much.